Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Prospecting for Pre-Foreclosures with MAPS coach, Christina Griffin. Please note this webinar is being recorded and you will automatically receive the webinar recording. If you have questions for your coach, please type them into the questions box located in your webinar control panel. Following the webinar, if you have any questions about today's call or coaching programs, please email us at maps at kw.com. That's all for me, Christina, take it away. Hey, thank you, Troy. Thank you for the introduction. And I am so excited that all of you are here uh, to learn. My name is Christina Griffin. I'm a mom of three, uh, married to an awesome guy, and I have a very large expansion team with Keller Williams in Tampa, Florida area. So we're in middle Florida. Um, I personally, I'd say my qualifications are, I have been selling real estate since 2001 and have been part of over 4,000 distressed opportunities and sales. So what I'm teaching you and the things that we're gonna share today and the program that we're gonna share with you are things that I personally have done and implemented into our business. So um, I just wanted to share with you a little bit about the program and who I am as people uh, are uh, joining us. So again, thanks for spending uh, time with us today. Um, okay, so first and foremost, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about the program. Um, and I will tell, I've been asked quite a bit on, is this like SFR? Guys, we, this program is going to teach you how to implement all levels of distressed real estate into your current business. We will give you a proven path on how to effectively master forbearance challenges, the power of an adaptive mindset when dealing with pitfalls and challenges, resources and tools to capitalize on distressed properties, maximizing the use of marketing strategies. You're gonna get real life examples on things that work step-by-step -step guides to implement in order to propel your business, identifying trends in the market and legal policies so you know what you're doing and you know how to do it legally uh, in your marketplace, understanding the mindset and motivation of sellers, mastering the full short sale process. And this is not the definition of short sale. We are going to give you a full process on how to market and how to create opportunity and how to successfully execute on short sales. I personally just got a short sale approved in, the, in three weeks. Um, it works and it's quick. Improving offer acceptance and closing rates, attracting distressed properties, buyers and sellers, and how to effectively work with lenders, buyers, asset managers, and those involved during the selling process. Thank you very much for joining us, and I'm excited that you're here. Okay. All right, I am going to go into uh, the data. It looks like I don't have computer audio. Okay, hopefully everybody has audio and there's no issues, uh, I'm gonna let Troy navigate that as I go through uh, everything and uh, just share with you um, the, um, just the next slide. So first and foremost, uh, forbearance, 4.3 million homeowners missed their mortgage payment in May of 2020. Guys, it's July. The stats and data has not fully came out to where the numbers are currently, but it is well over 5 million homeowners. The number of people who failed to pay their mortgage payment last month rose to its highest level since 2011, and it's continuing to rise. In May, 4.3 million homeowners missed their mortgage payment, up from 2 million at the end of March. According to Black Knight, a mortgage data company it's a great resource that brings the overall delinquency rate in May to 8%. It is much higher now. But it is not likely everyone in forbearance will ultimately be able to pay back what they owe. 
and banks and housing industry experts are keeping a close eye on the delinquency numbers to ascertain how many people are falling behind. The report shows serious delinquencies up from more than 50% over the past two months, with 631,000 homeowners now 90 days or more past due. There is not a workbook. We are going to share with you guys um, some stats, and then we're gonna dive into some things that you can actually apply to your business and share with you more about our course. But one thing I wanna pause, and I want to let resonate with you, is 4.3 million homeowners miss their mortgage payment. This does not include the amount of renters that are in homes currently that could not pay their rental payment. Okay, now the report also shows a total of 46,800 U.S. properties with foreclosure filings in March of 2020, down 3% from the previous month. As foreclosure activity across the country continued to decline in March, contributing to a run of quarterly declines, the number of filings remained just one-sixth of what it was following the Great Recession a decade ago. It's much higher now. However, the stats have not fully came in yet on June and what's going, what it's going to look like in July as the numbers rise. Nationwide in March of 2020, one in every 2,914 properties had a foreclosure filing. And again, it's much higher now. 27,812 U.S. properties started the foreclosure process in March of 2020. Why am I telling you these stats? The reason why I'm telling you these stats is I want you to see that there is a lot of pre-foreclosures across the country that were already occurring prior to the coronavirus, prior the, to the pandemic happening as employment, unemployment numbers rise and the delinquencies rise, the pre-foreclosures are gonna rise. There is what's currently called a moratorium happening in almost every single state across the country where they have paused until the end of August, the foreclosures from occurring with Fannie, Freddie and HUD. So, the reason why I'm telling you this, guys, is these numbers is what happened in March. Things are on pause right now. The unemployment numbers are going up, and it's going to continue to rise on people that cannot pay their for. It's going to continue to rise on people that cannot pay their mortgage payment. First and foremost, I want you to understand what a forbearance is. A forbearance is not forgiveness. Forbearance is a delay in making the payment. Many banks are allowing you to have 90 days or six months before they pay their mortgage payment. What does that mean? When that mortgage payment is due, they're going to have to in full make that mortgage payment. So if they didn't pay for three to six months, they're going to have to make those payments or they're going to have to negotiate options with the bank. Some banks will allow you to spread that over a certain amount of time frame. Some, very few, it's only gonna be the government back loans, Fannie, Freddie and HUD. They are working to try and have options where it can go towards the back of, the, back of your loan. But there is nothing in writing yet. Why am I sharing this with you? Because Homeowners, landlords, and renters, they need our help. Okay, so we're going to talk about some prospecting approaches. You guys see what the numbers look like. You guys know the numbers are going up. Every single state is different. Prospecting approaches. Prospecting approaches are going to be similar to what it would look like if you worked with expireds for sale by owners, 
circle prospecting, your sphere, or just your current neighborhood. And we're going to give you real live examples, letters, door hangers, scripts, and things that you need to do to apply to your current business. All of your businesses look different. We're, it's going to be a full facet through this course on how you can implement it into your current business so you fully understand how to help and service your clients. First and foremost, pick up the phone. We're going to show you who to call, where to find the phone numbers, and what to say. Write handwritten letters. That is the most powerful. A handwritten letter, a send out card, a card, a note, just to let them know that you're here to help. We're gonna give you scripts, we're gonna show you what to say, and give you real live examples to put into your letters. There's also something that's really brilliant, and I've been doing it for the last 10 years, it's something called a yellow letter. That is a letter that you can mass produce that looks like a real handwritten letter that you can send to people in your neighborhood or your prospecting list, door hangers. Social distancing is so important, depending on your state and what the requirements are and where the virus is in your state. A door hanger, you can put on the door and you could either step back six feet, knock on the door, or you just have someone put it on the door. I had a runner that put over 100 door hangers on a door yesterday didn't knock on the door, we received 12 phone calls already. We're going to show you real live examples of what those door hangers need to look like and how you can modify them for your business. Post-it notes. A lot of you um, may have not have thought of this, but a powerful thing to do to put on the door is a post-it note. Just call me and, with your phone number, and we're going to tell you how to do that. A pop buy. A lot of you, depending on your business, pop buys are really powerful. Remember, people that are in forbearance, that are in pre foreclosure, whether it's the renter that lives in the property, your neighbor, uh, it could be the landlord that the tenant lost their job and is unable to pay, something to cheer them up goes a long way. One of my favorite pot buys is getting $5 pizzas and you can have 20 of them and pot buy and put a pizza on their front doorstep with a note to call you. It works every time and we're going to show you strategies exactly what needs to happen. Uh, and guys, your market is different and depending on your price point, there's going to be a lot of different options on pot buys. So one thing I'm going to teach you to do is realize things that I personally have done in our team and things that will teach you to think outside of the box. Postcards are powerful as well, but when you are putting a, sending out a postcard to somebody that's in forbearance that their mortgage payments of the last six months are due in the next 30 days, there's going to need to be a message that has them really truly resonate with what you're saying and really understand that you're coming from a servant's heart and you want to help them. And one thing that I would like to explain to you, a lot of you don't realize there's something that's called a notice of default. A notice of default, otherwise known as a list pendant, is when the public filing happens with the court. All of your states, they could be different. The courthouses, they really, they could um, the filings could be different on how they process them and how quickly, but when someone defaults on their forbearance payment, that goes into list pendants or notice of default state. The reason why I'm explaining that to you is you need to understand that there's going to be a notice of default and then there's going to be a foreclosure sale. So we're going to teach you how to long-term nurture because people may not be ready as soon as the foreclosure is filed to sell their home. But right before the foreclosure sale, when reality sits in, we're going to be there to help them and show them how they can go to that next stage of their life, maybe rent a house for a while, recover their credit, and then help them buy a house in the future. We're going to teach you what to say 
and how to say it. One of my favorite scripts, you don't call them and say, hey, I know you're losing your house. Hey, I know you did not pay your forbearance payment. It's if you were offered the right price for your house, would you be willing to sell? That is to me one of the most powerful scripts. Okay, so what I'm gonna share with you next is one of my favorite resources, which is Land Voice. And I've seen tons of um, postings in the chat. And I have tested tons of different systems. And Land Voice, it, just like you, you call for expired, every single, a lot of you prospect for expired, a lot of you prospect for for sale by owners. Land Voice is a system that I've used for several years. And the data that feeds in there is going to show similar to what it would look like if you're looking at expired data. This is a real life snapshot of my personal land voice for the state of Florida. There's 6,370 results from January until now. Now keep in mind, most of the foreclosures that are in the current counties, at least in Florida, in many states across the county, country, the notice of defaults and foreclosure filings have been paused. So during the time frame that we've been dealing with the virus for the last four plus months, 6,370 results um, and, and homeowners, renters have had a notice of default filing for the house that they currently live in. This is a lot. And it's going to go up as soon as the moratoriums are there. I wanted to show you a real live example. What I love about their system is it shows you who is on the do not call. So just like any other system that you have the numbers feed in and you're calling um, and prospecting, you need to know to not call the people on the do not call. So we're going to teach you different approaches and how to do it legally and how to be able to help and service your clients and potential um, opportunities to the highest level possible. So um, next, and guys, I just want to let you know, I'm seeing tons of questions. Uh, we're going to answer all the questions at the end. And um, one thing before we go to uh, the next screen, how how do you contact the people on the do not call? Uh, so we're going to share many techniques, but a do not call means a do not call. So you can put something on their door. You can send something in the mail. There are many different approaches. You just can't call them. So we're going to give you exact options and real life examples on how to do that to implement into your business. Now, next. I'm going to share with you one of my favorite resources. Many of you are, are all over the country, and I'm so excited. Almost 600 plus of you are joining us right now. Um, guys, there is a resource. It's super easy, auction.com. And I have listed uh, on the bank owned side hundreds and hundreds of listings. Auction.com is going to show you how to really see what the opportunity is in your area. Hi everyone, hope everyone's having a great day. So first and foremost, I wanted to show you a quick hack on how to discover the opportunity in your area. So this is one of my favorite ways before we dive into things like looking at the foreclosure calendar, what to say, how to say, and effectively how to implement it into your business in the biggest way possible. So this is auction.com. Auction.com services many banks on the foreclosure side, short sales, and it also feeds in the foreclosure sale calendar across the country. Now, many counties, they have what's called a foreclosure moratorium due to forbearances. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to pull Las Vegas because Las Vegas is always a hot spot for foreclosures. And let's see. All right, guys, there's 34 potential opportunities. Now, remember, most of the moratoriums are going on right now. 
until the end of August. So we're gonna click on foreclosure homes. Now, foreclosure homes are properties that have a foreclosure sale date. These are REO right there, and here's short sale. So first and foremost, we're discovering what pre-foreclosure opportunity is. So you can see here, these are everything that has a sale date that has already been established. Now, if there's a moratorium in your state, this is going to rapidly change in a very big way. Now, this shows when a sale date is established, not when a notice of default occurs. So we're gonna look at this property here, September 16th at 9 a.m. is when they establish the foreclosure sale date. Now, you can see here, they say that the potential estimated resale value is 356,000. It even shows an average rent amount, which is brought in from collateral analytics. You're gonna see the stats and some of the details, and it really just gives you an overall of when the sale date is. Most of the counties in the country, the foreclosure auction is online. We're gonna scroll down and it doesn't get a lot of additional info. And that's where you're gonna learn how through our course to pull this information, what to say, how to say it, and how it's going to be implemented into your business. So this is just a brief overview of how to look at opportunity in your area on properties that already have an identified sale date, Okay, guys, hopefully you can hear. Um, again, I, I see that we've had some issues with sound. I'm not sure why. Um, uh, hopefully, okay, great. Um, now, um, auction.com, again, is one of my favorite resources, and you're going to be able to uh, really, truly see the um, it, what your opportunity is. If you're at a computer, check it out as you're, you're listening and watching. Um, now I'd like to go over, uh, next, uh, the foreclosure calendar and just a real life example. So remember, I know this is, um, it, some of you, it's, it's a little overwhelming, but really truly we want to show you what the opportunity looks like in your particular area and the things that we're going to show you how to navigate currently in your current market. Um, so um, I, I'm going to share with you a little bit about what an actual foreclosure calendar looks like for you. Hi, this is a foreclosure auction calendar and the foreclosure auction calendar is going to vary and it's going to look different from county to county. However, the concept is the same. This is one of the counties that I currently service. Many of the counties across the country are under a website called realforclose.com. This is the physical auction site with the county. I'm gonna show you a few easy ways to approach and look at opportunity. However, I wanted to show you this one first and foremost. This is an auction calendar. Due to the foreclosure moratoriums and the forbearance that is happening in our country, there's over 5 million people in forbearance. They have extended the moratoriums on foreclosures for government-backed loans, Fannie, Freddie, HUD, until the end of August. What that means is foreclosure is not going to start for many mortgages unless they're privately owned until after August. So what that means for you is there's a lot of opportunity. There's over 5 million potentials that you can be there and help add value 
to them and show them the best path with their current home. However, part of prospecting for pre foreclosures is the right before it goes to foreclosure sale. So you can see here, this is a calendar. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on, I'm gonna actually go over to August. You can see, again, there's not many opportunities due to the fact of the moratoriums, but we're gonna go ahead and just click on August 4th. You can see five properties. Now out of those five properties, the way that you analyze to know what is an opportunity and what is not an equity opportunity is the final judgment of final judgment amount versus the property market value. So you can see here it's $357,000 for the final judgment amount and the market value is 250,000. Great news, this is an awesome opportunity for a short sale. In our course, we're gonna show you step-by-step step on how to approach the occupant, what to say, and the entire process of how easy and streamlined a pre-foreclosure short sale is. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to go and approach this owner on a short sale opportunity. The next one, the judgment amount is higher than the market value. Another short sale opportunity. The judgment amount is higher than the market value. Now, a lot of times the county market values, actually most of the time, the market value with the county is a lot lower than the actual value. So if you see something that's a little bit closer, I highly recommend you to run comparables. And I'm gonna tell you why. Now, here we go again, another potential short sale. Now here on this property down on Baynet Lane, you can see a final judgment amount of $40,000 and a market value of 17,000. I highly recommend you run comparables on that one. The reason I'm telling you that is the properties that have more equity than what the judgment amount owed is is a great potential for a traditional listing a cash buyer or a personal investment property for yourself we're going to teach you how to have those conversations and how to fully navigate the way you look at a foreclosure calendar so this is just a great overview of what a foreclosure calendar looks like now what do you do you pull the property address, you find out who the owner is, and the next step is like any expired, any absentee owner, any for sale by owner is reaching out to them just like they're a normal homeowner to see how you can help, advising them that you work in their area and letting them know that you're there to add value, help them for the next phase of their life. Okay, so um, guys, I know that's a lot of info, and I do see that we did have, I'm not sure why, some people that had some, um, uh, just some sound issues. So uh, first and foremost, um, I wanted to show you today how you can really achieve what the opportunity and really look and see what type of opportunity is in your area, um, and know that uh, it's going to change and it's going to rapidly grow uh, and we're going to show you how to navigate it whether you want to work with investors you want to better service your buyers you want to learn how to work with sellers and how to get how to prospect to your even your neighbors so uh, from data list to show you how to look at free resources within your MLS what a final judgment amount is we're going to show you everything from start to finish. What I would tell you before we go into answering questions, um, there is a lot of opportunity. Um, now, the opportunity is really truly to help on a high level people having a servant's heart. I personally do a lot of work with the homeless in our area because I've been in the foreclosure industry for such a long time. 
this is a time frame that you can really change lives, you can impact lives. I'm gonna teach you how when someone is in forbearance and if they cannot pay their full forbearance payment, they cannot refinance and they wanna save their credit, you may have to help them get into a rental, maybe a short-term rental. Then you're gonna nurture them into another sale and then you're gonna work with their friends and family. This is part of your sphere. There are people that are in your life that you may not know that they're in forbearance right now. Now, there's a lot of questions about when forbearance was extended to. I want you to understand that there are a lot of different lien holders. There are a lot of different types of mortgage holders. There are government-backed loans, and then there is everything else. Government-backed loans, are going, they're working on options to be able to take those mortgage payments and apply them to the back of the loan. I've also heard many people ask, well, we're in a different time frame. There's a lot more equity than there, than there was in 2008. But I want you to understand, if someone owes $200,000 on a home that they bought a few years ago and they didn't pay mortgage payments for six months because they were in forbearance, those mortgage payments get added to what they owe on the home, which eats up their equity. So we are gonna show you how to fully navigate. I want you to open your mind. I want you to think of how many lives that you can change and impact and really truly to have a servant's heart and how this could really just change and impact so many lives in your business. So open your mind to the possibilities and know that we at MAPS Coaching with my experience are here to help and it's going to change. You have to be open-minded to the change and we are going to work together to uh, really navigate those changes. So uh, Troy, I'm ready for questions. I know we have a lot of them. Guys, I want to respect your time. So we were 30 minutes uh, and I'm, if anyone has questions, uh, I've got 15 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and answer questions for you guys. Uh, and I'm excited you guys are here and uh, just look forward to helping in any way I can. So I'm going to scroll through the questions and I'm going to answer what I can. Um, okay, so some people have asked how to get the pre foreclosure data. So contact Land Voice. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of different options and we're going to give you those in the course, but I'm just sharing with you a real live um, a company that I use and that will give you the notice of default, uh, not the actual foreclosure sale information, but the notice of default with uh, the public contact information. Okay. Um, I'm going through the questions. Uh, yes, a recording will be sent. What are the stats for California property? So California, again, uh, the, the most uh, public free information is to look at auction.com. There are a few others uh, like HubZoo and a few others that are public. Uh, I use auction.com, um, how, however, because it does navigate pre foreclosures and it does have foreclosure sales. So if you would like to know what currently has foreclosure sale dates in your area, that's a really great resource. However, uh, we're gonna show you how to actually go to the foreclosure calendar. I want you to understand though that there's notice of default filings and then there's foreclosure filings. Many different mortgage holders have extended uh, filing a foreclosure sale date till the end of August and the end of September. It depends on where the money comes from. Uh, if it's Fannie, Freddie, HUD, private, uh, on how long they've extended it through. So we're gonna teach you how to navigate that. Um, okay, if the number of foreclosures start was down in March, doesn't that mean there will be, no. Um, so prior to March, uh, it, it had gone down, but what I will tell you, I personally received about 25 foreclosure listings in March, uh, what, right before uh, the coronavirus um, hit. Uh, due to the forbearance filings of over 5 million homeowners, it's projected that we're going to be uh, similar or higher than uh, we were in 2008. But what I, tell, what I will tell you is there's a lot of unknown variables. Um, they're from unemployment going up 
to uh, kids being allowed to go back to school or not. There's a lot of different variables. So you just have to know that it's going to change and you have to really just pay attention to that change. And uh, that's something that I'm doing uh, rapidly um, for my own personal business, as well as educating you. Um, okay. Um, okay, someone had a question about land voice. I would recommend reaching out to them. They can answer about expires and other things. Um, okay, are these information on auction.com? Yes. NavigateAuction.com. Auction.com is not going to give you um, who to call, what to say. It's just going to show you a resource of foreclosure file of foreclosure calendars that feed into the foreclosure auction. Um, okay, I thought forbearance was extended through September. Now, please keep in mind there are many different mortgage holders across the country, tons of them. Um, so. Everyone has different guidelines on when they've extended their forbearance filings. It's going to depend on if it's a government-backed loan or not. I would highly encourage you, if you have not called your bank, if you're, say you're paying your mortgage payment and you're not in forbearance, call them. Ask them what their forbearance policy is, and it's a really big eye-opener. Um, many different banks have different policies, and you have to understand that that's going to rapidly change. Now, when people cannot, uh, when homeowners, landlords, Airbnb owners, when they cannot pay their mortgage payment, um, when their forbearance comes due, that's when the notice of default is going to be filed, and you're going to start to see the uptick in pre-foreclosures. Would you walk through one example, Holly? I'm so sorry, we're not gonna have time for that. However, uh, um, we will be doing future webinars and we'll uh, totally give tons of examples on the upcoming course. What I would say is go to auction.com, put in your area, drop down to pre-foreclosure, and that is gonna really be able to identify for you uh, what is in your area pull a house and really investigate. Uh, and a lot of the MLSs will give you some of the data, but I'm going to show you how to do that. How long before the auction date do they update the addresses on the website? Okay, that's going to depend on your state and who is filing. So um, I personally, we, we have many different drips that we do from when the notice of default is filed to when uh, the auction date is set just like anything, and I use an example as a divorce. When you go through a divorce, and some of you work divorce filings, that the emotion changes from when it's filed until when the actual divorce happens. The emotion is going to be rapidly different from when it's filed to right before the sale date, and we're gonna teach you how to navigate that. How to find a foreclosure calendar for Georgia. Um, so what I would recommend for you is to call your uh, clerk of the circuit court. Uh, in our course, we're going to give you like a step-by-step, -step, but if anyone needs to know right away, uh, check auction.com. It's a really great resource, but also your clerk of the circuit court will, will give you your foreclosure calendar. Um, okay, and I feel like I'm talking fast. I just want to make sure that I get as much info as possible. Um, okay, how does the final judgment amount in the property appraiser market value determine what they are good candidates for short sale or traditional? Okay, so many counties, many states, the um, what an appraiser says that your market value is, is completely off. Um, it's either low or high, but it's a really great uh, way to scroll through hundreds of records. And when the final judgment amount is higher than what the property appraiser says the value is, that's your first indication that more than likely it's going to be a great short sale candidate. Now, if the final judgment amount is lower than what the property market value says on the county records, then it could be a potential flip. It could be a potential um, investment for yourself, maybe. Um, and we're going to show you exactly how to navigate that because it's a really great opportunity for you to really just build wealth for your family. And if you guys haven't 
Um, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor is such a great book, but we're going to show you exactly real examples on how you can look at the foreclosure calendar and navigate that. But keep in mind, you've got the notice of default when the foreclosure is filed to when the sale date happens. So you're going to have time in between. And just like anything, if you get up every day and you prospect for expired, you've got a system and you've got a plan or you work your sphere. This is a lever that you're going to, uh, we're going to just show you exactly how to approach it to, to work in your business or get a better understanding so you can service your clients. Uh, do you do virtual events educating on the options for them? Yeah, virtual events are something that I highly recommend right now. It could even be uh, events for renters, educating them on their options. It could be uh, really letting your neighbors know about forbearance. Um, we are uh, putting door hangers on uh, our farm and just letting them know that we're forbearance experts in case they know anybody. Uh, so just know that there, there are more people than you can imagine that are in forbearance right now. And all of them are at a different circumstance because their bank is different on what the policy is. So for you to be an expert on a bare minimum of forbearance and how to represent your buyers through a short sale process is going to be really important for you. Um, however, we're going to go over how to list short sales, how to prospect for them, how to work with investors, um, you know, everything through the entire process because we're, fi we're doing 15 calls. So it's going to be a buildup of um, how to implement this in your business. Um, okay. Uh, a lot of people ask how to find the course. It's on the MAP Coaching website. Um, are we going to offer another? Are you going to uh, offer another class on this? We didn't get script. So part of uh, this is just a, um, a webinar. So part of the class, there's actually an entire class dedicated on script uh, within the uh, within our group coaching program. And after each module, many of them we offer scripts like how to have conversations with investors, how to work with pre foreclosures. Um, if you signed up for the course, I was told, uh, sorry, if you signed up for this, I was told you would get the recording. I'm trying to understand how if they are getting the short sale, how do I get paid? Okay, so just like a normal listing, short sales are easy if you did it right now, if you've got the right resources. So we're gonna teach you, it could be a short sale negotiator, how, how to properly build a short sale department within your own business or how to leverage, like I personally work with my current title company and they have short sale negotiators I've worked with for years. So short sales are a normal listing with a short sale addendum. Your state's gonna be different, so you can even ask your office on what paperwork's required. However, you put on there a commission and we're gonna, we're gonna navigate and show, uh, but on our listing, it, it, we put our 6% commission uh, and depending on the bank, between five and 6% always normally gets approved. So it's gonna vary and you have to know that this market changes, but you get paid on a short sale. Um, so uh, we'll teach you that. Um, okay, I'm trying, to, there's a lot of questions. So Troy, I, I know I've only got a few minutes. Um, I'm gonna scroll through these as much as I can. Um, okay, real foreclose. So real foreclose is uh, an auction platform for the state of Florida. So I type in real foreclose with my county and uh, it normally brings up the auction calendar. Your state's gonna vary. Um, if a foreclosure sale date has been set. Okay, so I, again, it's gonna vary state to state and you're gonna learn, learn that, but depending on your state and the bank, um, I've been able to stop foreclosure sale dates the day before the foreclosure happens. So if the seller is truly invested in the process, that is gonna be highly helpful. So we will help, we'll help you with that process. Um, yes, you'll get copies of letters that I personally um, uh, share. Um, the door hangers will be examples you'll get in our course. Um, do major mortgage. 
Okay, do mortgage do major mortgage holders hire agents to sell their property? So remember, you're going to have loss mitigation. Loss mitigation is going to be the pre foreclosure process. Um, so a lot of them do have preferred agents that they work with, and then there's the REO process. Um, better to start when notice of default more time to work with. Okay, yes, absolutely. So notice the default, definitely better to start. And there's a whole entire nurture process we're gonna start with you, uh, start through the process. However, each and every one of you should look at auction.com. You could, should see the people that have sale dates in your area and I would start there first because there's a lot of different um, opportunities and they it could be renters it could people that don't know their options and it's a really great start for you to just start having the conversations even if it's just you're their neighborhood realtor and you're there to help them through the process okay I am almost through with questions Yes, you're going to have tons of examples. And I want you guys to understand, you've got notice the default working with the seller. You've got helping the renter um, that is there get into the next phase of their life. You've got working with forbearance. You also have investors and how to find them properties and how to service them. Also, how to work with buyers and how to properly represent them on a short sale and look out for their best interest. So we're gonna help you through that entire process. Um, and I wanna respect everyone's time. I am I'm super excited you guys are all here. There's about five more questions I'm gonna answer. Um, okay, um, please tell me how to find contact numbers and address a foreclosure uh, people in foreclosure. Um, so again, there's a lot of different resources. Um, you know, Land Voice I shared, um, there's white pages, there's different types of skip tracing. We're going to, we're going to teach you that. Um, there is a payment for the course. Please look at the MAPS website. Um, at one point, HUD put out a list that would be allowable as fees. As you know, uh, do you know if there will be an updated one? Okay, so uh, please remember that, and this is something you're gonna learn, uh, and that our course is not just an encyclopedia version of what a short sale is, what a foreclosure is. You're gonna learn real life things. So de depending on the servicer is the fees. So that's part of leveraging your title company or your attorney and asking them their expertise for your state. But we're going to guide you through the process. Um, someone asked about a team taking the course. Please reach out to Matt. Uh, this is just an intro webinar um, on um, one aspect of the course that we're doing. Um, guys. Um, thank you so much for everyone asking about how to register for the course. What I will tell you is, um, even if you just learn how to better service your clients, we're going to need this. And I'm going to teach you real life things that I personally do in my business. We implement into our team. Our team created over 300 leads this week alone um, and with very little money out of pocket. Um, change lives, really, this is something that you can really become an industry expert in your area. And the pre-foreclosure market is going to be so huge. It's going to be huge. And it's sad and it's heartbreaking, the amount of businesses that are closing. But please know this is going to be pre-foreclosure on single family as well as commercial. And for you to learn as much as you can, and then really, we're going to help you understand what that that point of reference you can become the hot point with investors i when i first started in the, in the business i used to rent buses and put investors on buses and and take them to houses and teach them how to buy properties so we're going to help you through the entire process i am really excited you guys are here and thank you for being here and if you can please uh share with anyone you feel that would have find value and again thanks for joining us Thank you, everybody.